more traumatic things started happening. I have never shared these things on YouTube before, but I was around very close to a few relatives, family members of mine that were struggling with substance and alcohol issues. And so I was watching those things happen to them. And sometimes I was affected by their issues. <sighs> I had a really traumatic childhood. It started when I was really young. I was one and a half. So before I even remembered, my parents got divorced. So all I ever remember of them is them being divorced, split apart, and bouncing back and forth from house to house, going to my mom's, to my dad's, where my dad was a pretty absent dad and he lived with my Nona. So most of the time when it was my dad's weekends, I was being raised by my Nona. My dad would, for his weekend, either never show up or show up really late or forget and then promise that he would make it up to me. And then he would end up showing up with food as kind of an apology. And it kind of like did that over and over again to where I was always feeling not wanted. That was just the start. In order to start coping with those things that I was feeling as a little girl, as early as I remember, about four, I started to create this fantasy world in my head where I didn't realize it was coping at the time, but it was sort of a protection mechanism for myself as a smart little intuitive creative girl to process what was happening, but also I was too young to understand all these traumatic things that I was going through. So I put myself in my head in this beautiful, perfect fantasy world where I was loved and wanted and nothing went wrong. Although it's, it's normal to cope and it's okay to find things to cope to help you through tough times, I found when I do too much coping, it begins to ruin my life and take over everything. And then I'm not having fun anymore. And life is too short to not have fun and not feel good in every moment. You know, the older I got, the less my dad showed up until at 10, he just completely left out of my life. More traumatic things started happening. I. I've never shared these things on YouTube before, but I was around very close to a few relatives, family members of mine that were struggling with substance and alcohol issues. And so I was watching those things happen to them. And sometimes I was affected by their issues. Then on top of that, I also, I was struggling with body weight from a very young age and bouncing back and forth between two houses, I was given two different ways of eating. One was eat less, and my Nona side, my Italian side was eat more. And that was really confusing, especially when, and I don't blame anybody, There's this is nobody's fault. I know that they were raising me the best way they could and they meant well, but I was often called pudgy. And I know from my Nona, I think it was kind of like a loving thing and nobody meant for me to interpret it and take it on and feel bad about my body. But as a little girl, I did. And at, from five on, I really paid attention to how big my belly was and I became ashamed of my body. I also started developing a struggle with emotional eating in order to cope with all of these things as well. And on top of that, my Nonu got very sick with cancer and I was there the day that he passed away and I watched it happen and it was very traumatic because I didn't really expect what happened to happen. And so the more these things happened to me, these traumatic experiences, the more I went inside my head and the more of a perfect fantasy world I created. A world where my dad didn't abandon me. I had two loving parents who wanted me, who loved me. I had a perfect, a skinny body. I was beautiful, um, smart, funny, People wanted to be around me. They didn't want to run away from me like my dad. Nobody was sick. 
everyone was healthy and um, everything was perfect, like a fairy tale. No, there was never a bad ending in, in the stories in my head. And I just kept going deeper and deeper into this because I didn't want to deal with the real issues. And I was too young to fully understand what I was experiencing as well. So living in my head felt kind of like a like a safe house, like a safety bubble. And I even remember like I was outside in my Nona's backyard one day walking through my Nonu's garden and I was really into my fantasy world and I was actually speaking out loud, you know, because I was playing a character in my own head. And I remember hearing my neighbor next door, my Nona's neighbor saying like, who are you talking to? And I was so deep in my head, in my fantasy world, I didn't even know I was talking out loud. And I kind of got embarrassed. It was like, I thought everybody lived in these really amazing worlds in their head where everything is beautiful and perfect and nobody has to go through anything sad or feel bad about themselves. And the older that I got, the more deep that I went into this world in my head. But then as high school hit and college, you know, it wasn't cool uh, to live in a fantasy world anymore, but instead I started escaping in books. I turned toward horror novels because it was almost like what they were experiencing was a little worse in the novels than my own life experiences. So it was like, and it kind of made me feel better, I guess, like a, an escape. Um, some of you out there might know these, the Sweet Valley High books where there were the twins and the author always said like they had perfect size six bodies. And I, I always remembered that they were a perfect size six. And I pretended that I was the Sweet Valley High twins, Jessica and Elizabeth with the perfect size six body because I was always so ashamed of myself and my body and everything about myself. And I really, I didn't, feel wanted. I took on this, this character because of my childhood and um, it was better to escape in books and in my head. But then at a certain point, as I became an adult, the fantasy world switched to a very negative, very negative, down putting place to be in my head where my head was no longer a perfect fantasy world story anymore, but a constant yelling, and talking of negative talk toward myself or things I should worry about or uh, things I should do or shouldn't do. And it became a constant place where my head is so busy and so full of all of these things all the time that now what I thought was a safety mechanism, what I, I thought was a protection thing as a kid, it's no longer safe anymore. All day, my head is occupied. I am in my head, but it's not beautiful anymore. It is, it makes me feel miserable. And it's so negative and I, I can't stop it. It's a, a constant talk of all of these things, either putting myself down or, um, you know, I, if I go to rest or watch a movie, my head won't even let me rest. It's telling me like, you can't sleep, that means you're lazy. You can't enjoy a movie because you should be doing something else. You're, you know, you're lazy, you want to fail in life. So like, you can't watch a movie because you're messing your whole life up by resting. And it never stops talking to me and putting me down and making me feel bad all the time. And it's getting to the point where I don't want to live in my head anymore. I'm getting really tired of it. I don't, um, I don't want that fantasy world or that um, negative self-talk all day long. I've tried to fight it because I just like, sometimes I feel like it's so loud and it won't stop. I just wanna like get in my head and scream at my head, if that makes any sense, to stop. Like, can you just leave me alone? I don't wanna be in here anymore. I wanna be out here living my life and you know, doing my best and pushing myself and trying to be in the moment, not in here. I don't wanna be there anymore. Fighting doesn't work. And I know there's some of you out there that are listening to this that have also done this, where you've created these safety fantasy worlds in your head. And I know a lot of you that have been following me for a while do struggle with anxiety and overthinking like me. Um, you've said it in the comments quite often. So I'm making this video to say like I learned fighting 
it doesn't work. What, what I started realizing was becoming aware of what I'm doing seems to be helping me more. For years, I didn't even realize that there was all this stuff going on in my head. It was like I was asleep, like unconscious. And it was just happening to me all the time. And I didn't know that I was doing, you know, this constant thing that was making me feel bad. Now I'm aware of it. And most of the day I don't catch it. But there are moments now where I'll stop and I'll go, oh my gosh, I am overthinking and I'm making myself feel bad. Like I'm getting stuck in this in my head. I'll notice it and I'll go right back to doing it. But what I'm realizing is those moments when I catch it, that I'm overthinking and getting stuck in my head again, that's one moment where I've broken the pattern. I've broken that stream of constant negative self-talk in my head. I'm doing it more frequently now where I'm noticing. So that second is turning into seconds during the day where I'm breaking the overthinking. And my goal is to kind of do what I've done with my weight loss. Like I've lost 130 pounds and I've kept it off for eight years and I've, I've worked through emotional eating too. And how I did that was very small changes that I could build upon. And so these seconds where I'm catching myself, I'm hoping that I'll build up enough seconds where maybe Maybe, you know, a little bit from now, a couple weeks from now, a month, who knows, if I keep working on it, maybe I'll go 30 seconds to a minute without the overthinking. And that might sound very little, but for me, that will be like a mile, like so big for me to have those few beautiful seconds where there isn't all this stuff going on in there. And so what I mean by that, like by catching myself overthinking is I'll, you know, I'll feel in the pit of my stomach, it'll feel bad, like off. And then I'll notice my head is spinning, like all these thoughts, you know, you know what I mean by when you're talking in your head. And I will then go, wait, and I'll watch the thoughts coming in. So all the thoughts, I'll hear them, but I'll try not to take them on and like identify with them and like make them me. I, I kind of make it separate, like, oh, those are thoughts in my head, but that's in my head, that's not me. Those are not my thoughts, that's just this going on. And I try to watch it and catch that as much as I can. What I'm doing in those seconds, you know, like I maybe notice 15, 20 times a day now, which is huge. Oh, I'm overthinking again. Oh, watch those thoughts, they're not me. Now, I'm doing one extra thing where one of those moments where I catch my thoughts and I'm, I watch them, I'll actually try to take a breath to give myself a little bit longer where this stream of thinking isn't so loud in my head. And so I'll do this. Okay, Nicole, you're overthinking. Yep, I hear the negative thoughts. I hear them putting me down or telling me to do something. They're not me. Now I'm gonna breathe and I'll take a full breath in. Hold it for a sec and then a full breath out. And I try to focus on the breath going in, focus on the, the pause and then focus on letting it out. And when I focus, Eckhart Tolle taught me this by the way, when I focus on the breath, it seems to, because you have to focus on what you're doing with the breathing, it seems to stop that overthinking in your head for even just a few moments. And yes, sometimes thoughts do come in, but it's longer moments without the buzzing going on in the head. And those moments, they're like major wins. Like, I don't know what's big, like a Pulitzer Prize? I don't even know what that is, but you know, it's big. So for anybody out there that struggles with the things that I've gone, I, I've talked, about in this video, there is hope. I, 100% of my day is spent in my head, has been for years, but lately there are moments where I can be 95% in my head and the other 5% I'm catching. I'm catching the thoughts and I'm going, okay, this isn't me, this isn't me. And I'm making progress. And I just want you to know that there is hope you can do it and you're worth it. And remember that it's, it's this, 
you might have gone through something traumatic too and you don't even realize you were using that as like an escape, a protection mechanism, but you're so beautiful and such a pure soul and so whole that you don't need that. And, and they're not you, those thoughts. And you can catch them and you can breathe through it and you can do it. Believe me, this is an ongoing battle. This is, an, this is not even an everyday struggle. This is an every minute struggle for me right now where my head just takes over. But I'm not giving up and I'm gonna push through and you are stronger than you think you are and you're worth it to love yourself and just feel good in your own head and your own body. And uh, I love you very much. And I hope that this reaches any of you out there that really struggle with this kind of thing. And if you like this, please let me know in the comments if you relate, if you like this video, I can do more of these and or update you on anything that I find that's working for myself. And if you wanna know exactly what I ate to lose the weight, I do have weight loss eBooks. The links are down below. Code Nicole to save yourself 10%. I also have Hoodult HTLT Sups. This, they have the most amazing protein powder flavors. Luckier Marshmallow is one of my favorites. Code Nicole to save yourself 10% there as well. The friends, I love you and you got this. You are worth it. Take back your head and your body because those thoughts, they're not you, Bubba. I love you. Catch you in the next vid, cute roomies. Give it a thumbs up in this vid if you like it. So that helps it out. Catch you in the next one, cute runes. Peace out. Bye. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.